Hi, I'm Michael Janich. I'm the founder and lead instructor of Martial Blade Concepts and Counterblade Concepts. And one of the most common questions that I get is, what knife do you carry and what knife do you recommend for personal defense use? Well, the simple answer to that question is this, the Spyderco Uitimbo 2. This is a knife that I designed for Spyderco, currently in production, currently available, and this is what I carry every day and have been carrying for the past five years. In fact, I carry two of these, one on the left side, one on the right. But to really understand this knife, what I'd like to do is share a little bit of history uh, of how the knife design developed over time and kind of where it came from. Back in around 1999, uh, Spyderco invited me to teach under their sponsorship. So to teach Marshall Blade Concepts, or as it was known back then, Marshall Blade Craft, under their sponsorship. And one of the things they wanted me to do was to design a knife for the company. The first thing that I presented to them was actually this. This is a handmade prototype that I made of what I wanted in a personal defense knife at that particular time. So let me step around this side, give you a little bit closer look at this. So what we have here is a liner lock design, G10 handle scales, uh, and a perfectly straight cutting edge, a Warncliffe style cutting edge with a taper coming down on the back of the blade here. The shape of the handle is designed to be tapered toward the butt. This allows you to be able to grip the knife and use it as a striking tool like a Yawara or a Kubaton. It uh, has a pronounced finger choil right here that also acts as a very functional forward guard. And this extended ramp on the back of the blade allows you to grip the knife in a Filipino grip. So you can place your thumb on the back of the blade and be able to make the knife a natural extension of the hand. In this case, to make the knife really slim, what I did was I used a thumb stud mechanism uh, instead of the Spyderco hole. Obviously, that's something that would have to change as a Spyderco product, but this is my first attempt. And this was also set up with a clip for right side tip-up carry. And in fact, you can see that I poached a Spyderco clip uh, for this particular prototype. This is not designed to be um, showing off my knife making skills, but this is the easiest way for me to convey the idea of what I was looking for in a personal defense knife. So I met with Swiderco, we talked about this design, they weren't particularly interested in this at the time. And to make a long story short, where we ended up going instead was to do a fixed blade design called the Ronin that I was working on with Mike Snowdy. Mike Snowdy is a very talented custom knife maker and we were working together at that time. We adapted that to a Spyderco product. Uh, it was successful and Marshall Bladecraft kind of took off at that point. The, the folding knife project was still in the works, but Due to some challenges that Spyderco was facing at the time that I wasn't aware of, I was moving a little bit slower than what I'd wanted. So what I decided to do was kind of stir the shit a little bit, and I talked to Mike Snowdy and I called in a favor. I said, hey, I would like you to take the design that I presented to Spyderco, that Yojimbo folding knife design, and I want you to make a prototype and put it up on the, on the internet. This is the result of that. This is a one of a kind. Again, let me walk around and show you this in detail. So again, what we have is a liner lock mechanism here. You can see that the base of the tang is 01 because this is number one of one. There's only one of these in existence. Janet Snowdy mark there. Nice deep hollow grind. In this case, it has a swedge on the back and some jimping on the spine. This is D2 tool steel with a chisel ground edge. So the edge is only sharpened on one side. So bevel on one side only. The handle scales on this are carbon fiber and it's a radius carbon fiber so if we close it up and take a look at it from the end you can see that it's nicely radius fits the hand beautifully the tip is set uh, the clip is set up for uh, right side tip up carry the way I prefer it in the closed position very very smooth uh, very nicely tapered design still gives you that striking end and it's just a beautiful representation of the original design that I had in mind. Again, the whole idea was to put this out there, get people excited about it, and hopefully get them fired up about a, a Spyderco model. Well, the system worked. So what this prompted was ultimately this. So this became the Spyderco model here. This is the original Spyderco Yojimbo, and this happens to be the blue handled version. So both a blue handled and a black handled version. <clears throat> The black handle is actually more popular, and uh, th although the blue handled, in this case, you can see that it's a very bright blue, what I actually intended and had hoped for was a denim colored G10, something that would actually blend with jeans and give you kind of an urban camouflage. Unfortunately, at that time, we didn't have the many colors of G10 that are available today, so we were stuck with kind of an IBM blue, uh, black, red, and white were the only colors available at that time. Now one of the things about this that made it very different was, first of all, the Warncliffe blade design. That, as a tactical folder, was very new. Uh, the Warncliffe had been around for a long time, but primarily as a utility knife, not necessarily as a tactical knife. Also, you notice that it has about a 3-inch blade and a significantly longer handle. So when the knife is closed, you notice there's still a lot of real estate left in that handle. The idea was to be able to provide a full grip and also to allow you to strike with the knife if you wanted to, to use it in a closed position as a striking tool. 
Also, the three inch blade was designed at that time, this is prior to September 11th, three inches was the maximum blade limit allowed on a plane during heightened security conditions. So you could still carry knives on planes back then and this was designed to fit within those constraints. The handle shape was designed so that it gave you a tapered fit that actually complemented the length of your fingers. Obviously your pinky is shorter, ring finger is a little bit longer. As you grip this, it's actually a natural grip that fills the hand and then you have this deep index finger choil that provides a really functional forward guard without anything sticking out. That jimping on the back of the, of the blade here allows you again to extend that thumb forward. For folks who like the saber grip, we also gave you a little bit of jimping over here for the saber grip. The reason we prefer the Filipino grip is I can extend this forward. You notice my hand closes completely. Saber grip is I pull my hand back to here to index the thumb. I actually take my hand off the handle and reduce the amount of surface contact that I have. So this was the original Yojimbo. Notice that it has a hole in the, the clip here and also a divot here for being able to do grip changes, <clears throat> switching from standard grip to reverse grip. And this knife was ultimately released around 2003. Now, <clears throat> shortly after this knife was released, I got a, a job opportunity to work for Blackhawk Products Group. I ended up going to work for them, and out of respect for Spyderco, we decided that we would part company. Marshall Blade Craft became Marshall Blade Concepts at that time, and this knife was discontinued because it was inappropriate for me to work for another knife company while endorsing a product from Spyderco. So, Fast forward till 2009, I ended up joining Spyderco as an official employee, as a member of the Spyderco crew. And when I did, we wanted to kind of revisit that idea of having me design something. So I went back and I took a look at the original Yojimbo, which I was still carrying in many cases, even though I was working for somebody else, and decided that we were going to come up with the Yojimbo 2. <clears throat> so let's talk about the Yojimbo 2 and some of the details of this knife. We can also contrast those to the original Yojimbo. So we can see these side by side, um, basically what I had learned in the intervening years. So first of all, what I wanted to do, uh, the idea of a three inch blade was no longer really a concern. What I wanted to get was something that offered me as much blade length as I could in as compact a package as possible. In fact, what I was actually shooting for, one of my favorite knives and one that I've been carrying literally for decades, is the Delica. So when you look at the overall size of the Ojimbo 2 and the size of the Delica in the closed position, they're almost identical, and that's on purpose. Uh, the Delica I carry in many cases in my back pocket. I wanted to have that option with the Ojimbo 2 as well. So I wanted to make these of comparable size. One of the interesting things, though, is when you compare the blade length of these two, you get almost a half inch more blade length out of the Ojimbo 2 than you do with the Delica, simply because of the handle shape and the handle design. So even though it carries in roughly the same size package, it gives you more functional blade length. As far as the blade is concerned, again, what we have is a Warncliffe design, completely straight cutting edge. And the logic of that is it cuts with full power all the way to the point. So let's talk about that for a second. Can't do that with a sharp blade, so what I'll do is I'll use, this is a non-folding trainer from Keen Edge Knives. Uh, it's the closest you'll get to a Yojimbo trainer at this point. What you'll notice is when I go to cut with this design, if I'm applying pressure with the heel of the blade, increasing pressure, increasing pressure, increasing pressure, at no point does that pressure relief until I hit the end of the blade. So there's no let up whatsoever. It's always cutting with increasing pressure, which means it's going to cut as deeply as possible and transfer the power of the cut completely into whatever I'm cutting. If instead I had a knife that curved upward, so this could be belly to it, this could be a tonto style point, anything that has a sweeping point and more of a straight back, what you get is increasing pressure until you hit that point and then it simply slides off. Because your arm is always going to move in an arc. The human body is basically built on hinges and it moves in arcs. So if we get to the point where this terminal portion of the blade moves in an arc that runs parallel to the arc of motion of my arm, I'm not cutting, I'm not applying pressure anymore, I'm not cutting any deeper. Versus the idea of a completely straight cutting edge, it's always going to cut with full power all the way to the point. And no matter where it makes contact, you're always going to get maximum power, again, all the way to the point, cutting as deeply as possible. So that's the logic behind the Warncliffe design. Some of the other things that are incorporated into it, first of all, the compression lock mechanism. So a compression lock, many people say, is simply a liner lock on the back of the handle. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and it's a lot better than that. So let's take a look at the differences between a liner lock and a compression lock. So to do that, first of all, this is a tenacious model that I've cut away to reveal what a liner lock, or a liner lock looks like. 
So here you see the liner, you depress the liner, it allows the knife to close. In the open position, what the liner does is it indexes the ramp of the blade here, and it basically blocks it from closing. So the ramp on the blade points toward the butt end of the handle. When this lock gives up, when you apply pressure to close the blade and it finally gives up, what it basically does is it pushes that ramp, or excuse me, pushes the liner off the ramp and allows the blade to close. That's how we typically see lock failure with a liner lock. Well, with a compression lock, what you have instead <coughs> is you still have a liner, but in this case, the ramp of the blade faces upward. So here we see the ramp of the blade facing upward toward the spine of the blade, spine of the handle. And in the open position, what happens is the liner actually rides over that ramp. Now, what we also see here is the stop pin. The stop pin here serves two functions. One is it restricts the travel of the blade as it travels into the open position. And also what it does is it provides kind of an anvil between the ramp and the stop pin itself. So when the liner pops over, it's actually held captive between the stop pin and that ramp. So when you apply pressure on this, rather than simply trying to bend the liner and push it out of the way, what it's actually trying to do is to crush the liner between the stop pin and the ramp on the blade. This is a much stronger mechanism uh, in lock strength tests that Spyderco does. The lock strength on this is MBC rated, which is over 200 inch pounds of pressure per inch of blade length. That is going to be more pressure than what you can apply and still be able to hang on to the knife with your human hand. So anything beyond that is pretty much overkill. So that's the difference between compression lock and a liner lock. When it comes to the Ojimbo 2, what that gives you is a number of important advantages. First of all, it's incredibly strong, which is a great thing for a personal defense knife. We also have the advantage of having the lock positioned in such a way that I can't inadvertently release the lock when I'm gripping the knife. The lock is placed into the soft portion of the web of my hand. There's no way that even gripping the knife very tightly, I could inadvertently release the lock and cause the blade to close. When I do want to close the blade, all I have to do is place my thumb here and apply pressure to that lock release. And now I can close the blade one-handed without ever placing my thumb in the way of the edge, as, as you have to do with a liner lock or a frame lock mechanism. Again, I simply pinch it here, close it, good to go. So opening and closing on this knife, very easy. In the open position, this curve at the back of the blade here, smooth, no jimping. So what that gives me is a nice smooth surface that I can place my thumb on and be able to cut with lots of pressure. I don't want anything that is going to destroy my thumb or apply any type of um, grating texture against my own skin that might cause me to drop my knife. So this gives me a really nice purchase. In a reverse grip, what this also gives me is the ability to hook with this area here. It gives me a little bit of a scallop to be able to dig a little bit better if I'm doing poly suit motions, passing motions in reverse grip. When you look at <coughs> The taper of the point of the blade, what happens with a Warncliffe, in addition to cutting with full power all the way to the point, as you thrust with this, what happens is the point penetrates, it's a very acute point. As it penetrates, the ramp on the back of the blade actually pushes the cutting edge down, opening whatever cavity you're, you're puncturing, opening it from the bottom, so literally shearing along its entire length. It's a very efficient way to, punct to puncture and to thrust with this uh, particular design, very efficient as far as being able to get in with a, a very powerful and effective thrusting action. Now, as far as the shape of the handle, have a little bit more belly uh, or curve to the back here. That fills the hollow of the palm a little bit better than the original design. And it also allows it to lay in the back pocket. If you're carrying it without a clip or carrying in the back pocket, it nestles and sits flat in the back pocket this way. That would allow you to reach down, be able to grab the blade here and do a spider drop opening as far as getting the knife open. Now when it comes to opening, one of the interesting things about this, one of the, the comments that I've heard with regard to the Yojimbo 2 is that the hole in the blade is partly obscured. That is on purpose because I wanted to keep the blade or keep the knife as narrow as possible. It doesn't affect, however, the ability to open the knife effectively with one hand because the operative part of the hole is up here. This is the part of the hole that does all the work. And when you grip the knife, you're not going to grip the knife completely flat this way to try to open it, or completely vertical this way to try to open it. When you grip something in your hand, it typically nestles in kind of a, a 45 degree angle like this. It rests in the cradle of the fingers. So when you go to push this straight forward, your thumb indexes into the operative part of the corner of the hole. This relief cut in the handle allows that to happen a little bit easier. So you simply drive the thumb straight forward, just like that. It opens very easily. Now, in addition to that, you can also do the other openings. If you're a flick fan with the middle finger, 
flicking the knife open here, no problem doing that. If you prefer the marble opening, that type of thing, no problem. Again, using the thumb to open the knife this way. If you are into ring finger stuff, as far as reverse grip opening, again, no problem. And as we showed before, it also opens just fine with the spider drop opening. So all these work great. My preferred opening is the inertial opening, simply not touching the blade at all. Quick rotation of the knife from the closed position will pop the blade open. And again, closing the knife completely safe. One of the other advantages of this design over the original version is a four position clip. Tip up, tip down, left or right side carry. So for example, my left hand carry knife, this one is set up for left side carry. This one set up for right side carry. Again, you have the option of four position clip, tip up, tip down, left or right side. Now the great thing about the Ojimbo 2, I've been carrying this again for five years, literally every day. I've been opening this thing thousands and thousands of times. The lock is still just as solid as the day that I got it. Great knife. It has served me incredibly well and I have great confidence in this. Otherwise, I wouldn't trust my life to it. Now, one of the problems that we've had has been that the demand for this knife has been greater than what Spyderco could supply. Got good news for you. About a year ago, Spyderco opened its factory expansion, a literally a, a brand new factory facility at their um, headquarters in Golden, Colorado. And since then, they have really amped up their production on their US made product. And for the first time since this knife was released, we now have lots and lots of these in stock. Now previously, I couldn't even get these. I designed it, I worked for the company as my full-time job. It was hard for me to get these. Now, no problem. If you want one of these, if you need a knife that you can trust your life to, if you want something that answers a question, hey, what would Mike Janich recommend? This is it. Go to spiderco.com, get one now, or go to a Spiderco dealer, find somebody who has these available, look for the Ojimbo 2. Trust me, it'll serve you well.